Let's make some saltwater baits out of this. Hey, how's it going folks? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Not doing any fishing today. The weather's a little wonky. It's pretty windy and we got a cold front coming through today. Over the past weekend, we had a kind of a freak storm hit and it rained and the wind was blowing like 50 miles an hour pretty much all weekend. So no fishing this past weekend or anything. So I think today we're going to play around with making some baits and I've got the Epic Bait Molds with Wad Mold. I got it uh, during their Black Friday Cyber Monday sale, which was cool. And I've already made some bass baits with it. So let's go ahead and look at those. So here's some that I've already made. Top one there is kind of a, um, what it is is those uh, bass assassin speed worms that I like to use and gooseberry. When you melt them, it sort of turns into a dark purple with, with some blue flake there. And then I made some, some black bodied with blue flake with uh, blue tails. I made these for bass fishing, but uh, I suppose it could be used for saltwater too. But the main thing that I wanted to do this time around was find some actual saltwater plastic and remelt it because I've never done that before and I've heard it's a little different. So yeah, that's uh, that's the Epic Bait Molds Whip Wad made by Marlin Baits and Epic Bait Mold. Pretty neat lure. I've used it fishing and I've gotten a couple bites on it. I like it. It's, it looks good in the water and that tail makes a lot of movement so i think it's a it's a really good bait i think it'd be even better for for saltwater around here especially like get on a good redfish bite or something like that i think the redfish will eat that up so yeah that's the plan for today but uh, i don't have any saltwater plastics to remelt so i gotta go get some and i think the the best place for me to do that is a bait and tackle store in lake wells florida called bridge masters they have bulk baits and usually they have some saltwater specific baits uh, most of the time it's that old school paddle tailed swim bait hopefully they got some some good colors to use uh in saltwater fishing there's a lot of solid colors and a lot of um, flake mixed into the solid colors whereas like bass fishing lures a lot of those are more translucent i think they'll have a bit of both i'm hoping they have something i can use to to remelt if anything I've got some some white baits and some some solid colors that I can use uh, more freshwater plastic. They'll just get torn up if a fish ever bites it. But the big thing is where I want to go fishing, there's a lot of pinfish and they tend to tear off the tails of lures. So I was hoping for a little bit tougher plastic. Let's go ahead and get on the road and head up to um, Bridge Masters and see what they got for today. So we're at Bridge Masters, trying to be quiet because they got some customers, but yeah. we're gonna get some bulk baits and some pretty wild colors. And hopefully we'll make some cool looking saltwater colored whip wads.
I got a basket full of plastic. But I wanted to come back here and check out the rods. This place is awesome. If you ever get a chance, stop in Lake Wells, go to Bridge Masters. You won't regret it. I got $45 worth of bulk plastic. Let's get on home and get to chopping. That's a lot of plastic. So while that's cooking, let's go over the whip wad real quick. It is a grub style bait with a swim bait body. And as you can see here, it's got these wads of plastic in the tail. And that's why it's called the whip wad. Uh, this mold's really cool in that it came with hook slot inserts and you can take them and reverse them to get a solid bait. It's really cool bald, really glad I got it because I think it's a very unique bait. Not many people will have it and not many people will have a grub with that much mass in the tail. So that moves a lot of water and I think if you've got those fish that are really looking for some movement, they'll be keying in on that bait. Up at the top, it's got indicators, uh, which side's the belly and which side's the back. So whenever I do my laminates, be able to easily tell which way I need to face injectors. Going back to a previous uh, video I did for, with the Epic Bait Mold, they don't have any of the, um, the wing nuts on the outside uh, to keep it clamped shut. So you have to do it with an actual clamp. And that's basically ready to go. Now we just gotta get our plastic ready. We're getting close. Definitely getting close. All right, I think these are about where I want them. 335, that's pretty good. So we'll go ahead and get these going. Does not take a lot to get them in there. Injector was cold, mold was cold, everything was cold. heating element or something out here. <laughs> Put my stuff in. Okay, while I was waiting for these to set up, I went ahead and cut up the sharp screws so we can play with that in a little while. Go ahead and get these on their side. Make sure they're all sitting right for the reveal. There we go. Some pink whip wads. Turned out pretty good. And what we'll do is, uh, I usually like to cut right here, there's a, some hash marks in the texture of the bait. And then there's a part where it's smooth, right here behind this fin. So I just cut diagonally right there. And uh, that's what I'll use. I think that gives a, a good amount of uh, surface area for the, uh, the next color to adhere to. And there, I think it'll be good to go. So we'll go ahead and get these... Uh, Tails chopped off, throw the rest back in the pot, and then uh, get her remelted. So I've made the tails, six tails out of the pink, and now I'm warming up the uh, chartreuse to do six uh, chartreuse tails. Um, but I'm going to do white bodies on these, and so I'm going to cut up these, these uh, white lures and get them ready. But definitely cut up your big lures, especially when you have one that big. <laughs> uh, that just helps the uh, plastic melt evenly, so you don't have stuff that's too hot and stuff that's still not melted yet. Alright, well, I've got the first batch of chartreuse in the mold. It shot pretty well, but I think it cooled off too quick, and I keep putting putting blue stuff in there and other colors and I'm gonna mess it up and turn it green. Come on. I think it'll be fine. Well, just gotta wait for these to uh, cool off a little longer and I'll go ahead and demold them. Alright, there we go. Some fully chartreuse whip wads. There's their tail. Go 
ahead and put that on the rack for now and then we'll do another round of these and then I think we'll move on to finally making some bait all right I think that's ready all right let's see how these bad boys turned out a little worried about that one, I don't think I got enough plastic in it. So it's hard to keep a clean work surface around here. Oh wow. There we go. That's what I was aiming for. That is a white with a pink tail swimming grub if I've ever seen one. But it's a whip wad, so it's better. <laughs> there we go. Looks like redfish candy to me. look great. Now the plastic's starting to turn colors a little bit. That's just what happens when you remelt white and heat it up so many times, but it's starting to not look as white anymore. Well, I don't know. I guess it's still white. What do I know? <laughs> Yeah, these are turning out great. That'll be good if the water's muddy. All right, one more set of chartreuse tails to go, and then we can move on to something crazy. All right, I think it's go time. First electric chicken, here we go. This is filling up. What a mess. That ain't go according to plan. <laughs> what a mess. Let's see what kind of monstrosity we made. I know this one didn't work. This one might have. This one's a big maybe. Hollow head, no good. This one does not have a hollow head. So it turned out pretty neat, I think. It's not as bright as I wanted, so maybe I need to do the chartreuse. I mean, it's it's kind of electric chicken, but it's not very electric. It's more pink cranberry sauce with a uh, side of uh, pea soup, but 
It is what it is. Keep on making them. All right, round two, here we go. wear gloves. Messing with dual injectors. What a mess. Alright, let's see how these turned out. Again, I think this one's not going to look good. It's all just mixing. Not in a good way. Let me see where we go. So, I mean, that's sort of, I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll buy baits that are supposed to be electric chicken and they'll look like that, but that's not exactly what I was going for. And the, most of this bait's pretty good, but I was hoping it would follow through through the tail, but it looks like it's just mixing up. And that can be a number of things, but I think what's happening is the, um, the molds in the, uh, the mixing block for the dual injectors are just cooling down too much between pours. All right. So these will be the last baits for today. I got all that other stuff to use for another rainy day. Ooh, that one didn't do good. Oops. All right, so that's a, I don't know what happened there. I think that's probably heat warpage, probably because I got it too hot. That one looks pretty good. That one also looks good. So that one definitely did not turn out right. You can see it right there. There's a whole gap missing out of it. Oh, well, we've been learned. Right back in the pot it goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good batch of baits to take out with me uh, my next trip saltwater fishing, which will be this week. Good to see how they uh, how they do pretty soon. So yeah, that was the uh, Epic Bait Molds Whip Wad. Here's a little selection of baits we did today. Really excited about these uh, these white bodied ones. I think they'll do well. There you go. Pretty good mess of whip wads. So yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be it for today. I appreciate you guys for watching. If you could, please uh, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I put out videos every Wednesday. Thanks for watching. Bye.